So, and of course, then our Austrian friends we have here today. So, this is making up a total of 38 male teams we've just seen and 39 male and female th uh, teams we're going to see, totaling up to 77 teams. That's quite a bunch. And if you don't know it by now, competitioncorner.net is where you can go to check out the leaderboard with all details. So you can check out your team and also athletes and teams you might be interested in. Just click on their names and you can see a athlete profile. You get some info about their past competitions, about their performance, their benchmarks and stuff. It's quite cool to see what kind of amazing athletes we have here today. And really a cool service by competitioncorner.net. Cool overview over the things happening today. It's a cool, cool leaderboard. Go check it out to make sure you know what's up. So that's 90 seconds. So, heck. Yeah. So, 30 seconds. You see another bar in the setup that's 45 kilogram for the ladies overhead squad, and you see a set of 16 kilogram kettlebells. Otherwise, the rep scheme stays the same. The box height's gonna be dropped, I suppose, but we'll. Get to know it in like 10 seconds. All right, let's go. I'm excited to see some male, female CrossFit action right here now. Want to see how they split up the work. Okay, so far, all moving well. Some are fast, some are even faster so far. And same thing here, after the first half of reps, bar is being dropped and moved into the next section. Okay, let's see who's gonna get first through those 60 overhead squats. And it is lane nine, CrossFit Oif 
getting to those box jumps over first. That's a great speed right here. And then followed by lane two, the beast. And in seven, it's Valens Crush doing it. Reebok CrossFit Valens, our friends from Luxembourg. Now most teams done with their overhead squads. Lorena is finishing hard and fast right here in lane nine. Crossfitoff maintaining the lead so far with their first GHD sit-ups. And that is Mikhail Senti working for his team. All right, now we have CrossFit Ike working in their GHD sit-ups. Berlin represented right here. That is Ulrike for her team. And Melo and Piero in lane 10 working. Melody Duval, Pierre Macron, CrossFit Wonders. So now being joined by the other teams. And in four, that is Bambi and Brutus, Michelle and Emmanuel getting ready for the GHDs. Just two more box jump overs to go. Yep, and off to the GHDs. Now everyone into it. And guys, keep your eyes from time to time on lane nine. There is already someone rowing. And this is Michael for CrossFit Oif. And now we have Melo and Piero as well, CrossFit Ike. Going here, Valens Crush as well. That's quite a speed and teams are catching up. Looking over to the other side, the beast, the skinny cats rowing as well. As we've seen in a few past heats, things can change seriously when they get to the rope. We had teams being in the lead and then coming in third or fourth place just because the rope was giving them a hard time. The struggle was real. And this is Lorena for CrossFit Oif, rowing right now with a 139. That's pretty strong, as she appears to be every time we see her in a competition. Strong and powerful. All right, so everybody's rowing right now. After that, it's going to be kettlebells, but see who gets off that rower first. And in lane nine... Lorena still rowing, that is on her way back, 450 meters left, and they're about to exchange tasks. All right, guys, so let's see what happens next to them. That's CrossFit IK, almost passing the 500. And we've seen this guy being really strong in his rowing, and that's Laszlo Smoji right here in six pushing his team past the 500 meter mark. And so is Valens Crush in seven with 
Jackie Schmidt. Bambi and Brutus rowing really hard here, approaching the 500 meter mark. The skinny cats, 300 left right here. And that's just 220 left for the beast in lane two. So watch for the judges' arms go up in the next few moments. So who's it gonna be? Some ladies already being ready for their kettlebell shoulder to overhead work. And we see CrossFit Oif, the arm is going up. We have 30 meters to go. It's 20 to go. Come on, Mikai, finish it up for your team. And then it's back to Lorena one more time. 60 kilogram per hand. All right, being too fast, struggling. But now she's got the rhythm figured out and she's going strong. Look at this, guys. Look at this. No problem for her. Nice luck out. Good job right here. She's moving those kettlebells to the next section. Michael is picking up. As he will do his portion of the 30 shoulder to overhead right now. While Lorena is prepping for the deadlift. And it's going to be still 140 for the men and 100 for the ladies. And here we see that 100 kilogram bar being lifted for the first few repetitions in the first heat here. And it's Lorena still going strong on that bar. So here in a lane two, the beast also on the bar. You see CrossFit Ike on the bar. And that is Valentina lifting those 100 kilogram for three repetitions for her team. CrossFit Civitanova, Italy. And the skinny cats, Elsa working her way through the 100 kilogram deadlifts. And Thunder Buddies going with singers, dropping that bar after each one, alternating reps. And CrossFit Oif is maintaining their lead with only two deadlifts left here in lane number two. Make sure to not miss this as Lorena finishes the deadlifts. Good job right here. So we are 10.50 into this workout, almost 11 minutes. And now see what the teams can do with the rope. Okay, Lorena taking a breath, back to the rope. Looking strong in those first pulls. Trying to get a hold of that rope. Let's go, Lorena, let's go. Keep it up. Okay, now we have Thunder Buddies climbing the rope, Valens Crush. Melo and Piero are on the rope. So are the skinny cats and the beasts. Bambi and Brutus working off their deadlifts. Crossfit Oif, come on guys. 
Keep going strong. Michael on the rope. Lorena taking a rest. Which judge is going to raise his arm first? So it is over here in lane three, the skinny cats. That is Elsa and Thomas, old gym CrossFit. And next to them, the beast judge raising his arm as well for five reps remaining on the rope. So right now, it is Valens Crush and Melo and Piero being head to head, making up ground. So watch closely now as you're about to see some people run into the finish. And look at this guy, lane 10, Melo and Piero right over here. CrossFit Wonders. Good job, guys. Franz is taking this heat. So over here, next one, right to me, lane seven, sprinting with lane three sprinting. That was Valens Crush and the Skinny Cats. Good job, guys. So this is one more for the beast. They are down off the rope, sprinting across the arena, finishing this workout. Good job, the beast. CrossFit Civitanova Italy, second team representing right here. CrossFit Oif, come on, where are you people? It's just one more rope climb left. Michael is doing it. Okay, they got it. Here they go. Lorena, Michael, Crossfit Oif. And as we've seen it before, the rope means the real, real struggle and it can change things up as it did right now for those two. Afgates cross FDK, done with the rope climbs in lane eight. This is Ulrike and Felix from Berlin representing cross FDK. And one more rope climb left for each. Bambi and Brutus, look at them. There you go, guys. Finish this workout after some struggles before. And this is just one more rope climb. Left right here, we got 10 seconds. What is going on? Can Laszlo Smudgy make it happen in the last few seconds? Oh man, they were giving all they got, but the rope shows no mercy. The forearms just being burned and being emptied completely. That was a good, good, good kickoff for the male, female teams. We have two minutes before we see the next heat, second heat. Two minutes, athletes. Von der Gym is ready again.
Arbeit? Wegen, äh, wegen Arbeit, wegen Arbeit, Teilnehmen, halt, Arbeit. Das ja. ist halt eine geile Stadt, Amsterdam. Okay. Und äh, ich habe halt einen Vollzeitjob sozusagen das bekommen beim Bondo Gym. Gym ja. ja, ja, das ist ein Crossfit-Gym, okay. wir machen halt noch andere Sachen. Cool. Ja. Du hattest mit einem anderen Zwischenstopp auch weiter oben. Ähm, ich habe einen Freund in Aachen geholfen, ja. ein bisschen, aber ich habe halt nur für ihn gekocht, gleichzeitig okay. zu Tina. Aber hier äh, in Amsterdam habe ich halt so 25 Stunden bekommen und sowas. Und das war halt, der Laden ist Hammer. Äh, die Erlesen sind Hammer. Und deswegen äh, die Entscheidung gezogen. Ja. So, all right. One minute, just been checking in. Checking in with Niklas from Team Wondel Gym. I uh, met this guy a few years ago in the beautiful city of Cologne. Right now, he's rocking Amsterdam. Whoop, whoop. Being represented by Wonder Gym right here. Our neighbors. All right, party people, 30 seconds. Athletes on their starting mats. Ten seconds. And go, guys, overhead squats. So what we've been seeing so far in the male and in the mixed heat before, the least trouble they have is in the overhead squats. They are just blasting through it. But then the closer we get to the rope, you see more and more separation of the field. And with the rope being like the real test in the end. So we just do the athletes do their work and then keep a close attention to what happens over here as they get closer to the rig. So, and here we go in lane five with Team Tsunami, like a tsunami, going through their overhead squats. And then we have in 10, AC and Dummy, CrossFit Munich, and then we have Skullfit team also. And look how fast those ladies are going over that box. Look at lane nine. This is Skullfit team, Chiara, Rota, CrossFit Bulwark, Italy. And now handing over to her partner, Roberto Ayevi. And he is fast as well. So most of the teams now working on their box jump overs. Okay, some are jumping over those boxes and some are dancing. So this is Wonder Jim's Brenda, like, dancing over that box. Look at this.
All right, so over here in five, still with a great, great, great speed. This is Team Tsunami, Ricardo Romano getting ready for the row. Okay, let's see. And here we go. That is Team Tsunami taking off first on the rower. Let's see who's going to go next. Roberto going strong with a 338 right now on the row. And next to him, this is Northern Spirit getting on the row with Aurelio Lodetti kicking off the row for his team and being joined by Flans Buddies into that is Madeleine Wichtrup for CrossFit Flensburg. Yeah, that's the first, first third of the row. 330 meters right now. Already rowed for Team Tsunami. So now we have all the teams in the row. 1K row, 1,000 meter row. And it's a 128 right now. The 660 left, Dominic Becker, CrossFit Munich. We have 590 left in here, Skullfit teams, Roberto. Seven seventy Joel Wächter, CrossFit Basel, Schnurzel and Purzel. And Brenda handing off to Nicholas with seven twenty left. And then with five seventy right here, sweet beasts. That is Jindrich Tovares. The guy with the strict hands and push-ups. And Roberto is handing over. See what they have left. It's just 270 meters left right here. Team Tsunami. Northern Spirit, 350 left. All right, the cameras are having their attention towards this end of the field, where we have 5.30 left for We Are Athletic. We have 3.60 left for the Flens Buddies. And for CrossFit 7.53 AC, we have 400 left. So 2.60, Northern Spirit. Yep, last 100 over here, Team Tsunami. Now just watching for the judge's arm go up, indicating the last 50 meters of this row portion of the workout. All right, over here, don't miss it. Team Tsunami now on the kettlebell shoulder to overhead. 30 reps. And then AC for her team, CrossFit Munich, in 10. Skullfit team. Okay, and this seems like lane 10, AC and Dummy are 
catching up. Already having moved the kettlebell to the next section. And looking good. Looking good with that piece of equipment. So, but it's still going to be lane five, Team Tsunami, with first deadlift reps. Okay, he's not struggling with those. And it's going to be CrossFit Munich's AC to be the next. Work on those deadlifts, 100 kilogram. You see she's working hard, but she can do it. And now Catalina for Team Tsunami and back to Ricardo again. They're moving their bars for the last 10 reps in the deadlift. Okay, Skullfit team is keeping their pace alongside Lane Tans, AC and Dummy. And Sweet Bees also still in the race right here. There you go, in lane five we have Team Tsunami and this is Ricardo already climbing up that rope, being no rep because not having touched the beam on top. Yeah, Northern Spirit, powerful first pulls right here. That is Rebecca Vitesson, Italy. So now taking a little break, Aurelio, before attempting his rope climb. Come on, Northern Spirit, keep it up. And we see CrossFit Munich on the row. AC and Dummy in lane 10. Skullfit team. So they have to touch the beam, guys. They have to touch on top. Not just the attachment, but on top. And look how strong Northern Spirits Rebecca looks like on those first pulls. Northern Spirits strong in those rope climbs. Now Aurelio going again for Team Northern Spirit. Okay, Joel Wächter finishing off the deadlift portion of the workout. Jessica Price attempting CrossFit Basel's first rope climb with a slight kip. If you know how to do it, you can do it. So arms up here in lanes five and four. Team Northern Spirit with four climbs to go. Team Tsunami next to them with five to go. This is what you don't want to be missing. But also expect some surprises as you've seen them before. Things can change in that rope climb. Next arm is raised here for the Sweet Beasts and also for Skullfit team. But so far, still with a slight lead is Aurelio from Northern Spirit, but struggling now. Come on, Aurelio, let's go. Grip that rope. Let's do it. There you go, man. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. You see those arms lifted. One rope climb in lane four, one in lane five, just two in lane six. 
Let's see how this turns out. It's gonna be a run. Both ladies battling it out. Team Tsunami and Northern Spirit on the run to the finish line. And they could maintain the lead all through the workout. Team Tsunami with Northern Spirit next to them. Good job, guys. Awesome. All right, Sweet Beasts. Almost running me over. <laughs> Rightly so. Good job, guys. Coming in third. All right, this is Skull Fit. Come on. Lane nine, just one more rope climb to go. This is going to be Chiara Rota attempting this one. Now she's handing over to her partner, Roberto Adievi. Okay, look over here in lane two. This is the Flens Buddies going next. Good job, guys. Awesome. All right, and then we are athletic, raising up the arm, finishing this workout. And also done, Sculpted team. One minute to go, and not many more rope climbs. All right, that is Wonder Gym. Just one more to go. 40 seconds. Amsterdam, what's up? Let's hear it for Nicholas. All right, they're taking their time. 30 seconds left. And Brenda wants to make sure nothing goes wrong. And she nails it with 15 seconds to go. Making the way across the finish line. Good job, guys. Team Wonder Gym right here. And this is the last three, two, one, and time is up. Okay. You gotta be loving those workouts. You gotta be loving those workouts, giving them all a hard, hard time. May they be finishing the workouts or not. <laughs> Look at this guy, he's having a hard time. Hindri Tovaris, CrossFit, Pressburg, Slovakia. Nice guy, enjoying his time. <laughs> yeah, and again, showing his biceps. That's something I'm really rooting for during those competitions. We could have some awards for the best athlete outfits. We will be probably seeing some crazy costumes. Um, next thing I, I root for is um, awards for the best team names. They make me enjoy those, award, uh, those competitions even more. Cool names to read out loud. And then also we could have a like a little posing competition as well. Those guys showcasing some functional mass. Who would go and watch a biceps comparison competition during some of those competitions? Like uh, Adrian Munvila and uh, Jindri Tovares and Stefano Milorini battling out who has the biggest biceps. So probably a few guys would go and watch. It's okay if you don't want to tell it right now. Quite sure I would see you there. I would go and watch. I would go watch some female biceps as well. One minute. One minute, guys. 60 seconds. Still going fast-paced through this Sunday here. Hustle, hustle, hustle. Okay, 30 seconds. Athletes to your starting mats, get ready.
10 seconds. Welcome back into the Sports Center here in Villar, Switzerland. It is Heat 3 of 4. The male females will keep a close eye on lane 6 and lane 10. Sarah and Cass in lane 6. Wild Thoughts in lane 10. They are both tied for 10th. I'm Jeff Bright alongside Bill Grunler. And as we talked about, Bill, if you're in Heat 3, it's a chance to finish this great event, the Swiss Alpine Battle, going, hey, I finished in the top ten with an event with four teams that have eight games athletes. Exactly. I mean, one, you are not going head-to-head -head with them because they're not on the floor with you, but you have a chance. I and mean, we have two teams that are tied for tenth place. They want a shot to get into that top ten, so hopefully make it to the finals to get on the floor with those big names. And we have teams here that have the ability to do something like that. Um, let's go real fast over what this event is. It's a classic chipper. The rep scheme goes 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. That's overhead squats, 60 kilos for the guys, 45 for the ladies, 50 box jump overs, 40 GHD sit-ups. Um, they do a row, a thousand meter row that's scored separately as its own event uh, for time. Then you go right to the double kettlebell shoulder to overhead for 30 of those. 20 heavy deadlifts, 140 and 100 kilograms, and then 10 rope climbs. And the rope climb really has been, as far as the chipper event, if you have rope climbs, you're going to do spectacular. If you don't, you're going to struggle. This is lane four, the pink top, yellow out of CrossFit uh, Fallon in Sweden, Lovisa Bungard as the athlete you see. She is team of Joachim Tornby, the uh, male in the blue shirt, now doing his overhead squats. Two separate barbells, 60 kilos for the males, 45 for the females, but you can still split the work any way you split want to. Split it up any way you want. It's not 60 for each athlete. So, again, we talked about some of the strategies here. The object would be put your stronger athlete on the larger number of overhead squats, put your lighter, more agile athlete on the box jumps. And, again, the box jumps, and what I like about this, the box jump overs, it's not the old school way, and we just aren't seeing people do this very much anymore, which is good, where they face the box. They're doing it sideways style. It maybe, I don't know, that's we're in the Swiss Alps. We're actually moguling the box back and forth. And that's a very smart move. You can see these athletes here. Now that's a step down. All that really does, it does save energy, which is good if you're an older athlete like myself to try to save your Achilles, which is good. But this is not the speed that you want. Jolo on the top of your screen, the first team to get to those box jump overs, carried by Julia in eight, while Thoughts in ten were the other two teams. Here we go, looking at lane number three as well. Uh, train Blue tall and small at a Train Blue CrossFit in Austria. Armin Striebel and Belinda Heber, and that is Belinda right now in the box jump overs in the black tank top. And there goes Armin to flip the box over for her. Back to lane four, and Jolo out of Sweden. They are currently in 15th place. Earlier today, they had a 22nd in event 6A, and they finished 12th in 6B, which was. Well, now here they go. So trying to make a move up. Green, blue, tall, and small is in first. Short and compact, only nine. Currently in second place. Now some teams making their way to the GHD, and that's Train Blue, Tall and Small in lane number three. Linda Heber, Armin Strebel. And you know what? This is the right person to be putting on the GHD. You want to put your shorter athlete. Again, the object here is range of motion, and if you have a shorter lever, you're going to be able to move that lever quicker, and on a GHD where you're going to be having a lot of that midline assault, you want the shorter lever. I think it's perfect to put her on that GHD. And if you look at her compared, to the rest of the tempo of the other field, it's so much faster than some of these longer people. I know myself, I'm a taller athlete, so I go, as a, just doesn't, I just can't make it go very fast. I go, but I just can't make it go as fast as <laughs> some of these shorter athletes. So four minutes in, 16 minute time cap. And the classic chipper, and we do have one male getting ready, and it's just getting set so that you can begin the row once your teammate is done with their GHDs. That is lane six. You have Sarah and Casa. They are tied for 10th earlier today in the flip it A and B. They were 14th and 9th in those two separately scored events. Lane number eight carried by Julie out of Denmark. And in lane nine, short and compact out of Switzerland. And in lane 10, wild thoughts already on the rowers. So you see those teams already beginning the row. Now this 
not only important for the full chipper event, but separately scored as well. So if you're an outlier and rowing's your thing, you try to kill it and try to get try to get 100 points on this rower, not, not throwing away the rest of the chipper. If you do on the row, you're going to advance further than anyone else as well. Well, I mean, think about it for a second. Everyone has done an all-out sprint on a rower. The normal response to that is you kind of fall over and collapse off to the ground afterwards because you're completely depleted. You don't have the ability to do that here. You have to go all out because this alone is scored as one single event, a 1,000-meter sprint for time, period. But it's right in the middle of this other event, so you've just done work. You still have work to do after this. So I love the fact that it's put in the middle. It, th it really does throw your strategy right out the window. And the athletes that are the better rower, the stronger rowers, are going to naturally have the advantage just because of the length. Now, with the team here that was working originally that we've been watching, they put the female athlete first, had the male athlete go second. So what I'm thinking on that is have the female do about 250, maybe 300 meters, get her off, get her rested for the shoulder to overhead, especially if she's a strong athlete. Put your tall athlete, the male athlete, to do the larger chunk because generally speaking, the males are going to be able to do go faster, pull harder, and be able to get through the rest of that row a lot, a lot quicker. Much like the wall ball event today on the second part of the flip it for the male, female, it's very advantageous if you have a team with a taller female athlete, you're going to get more, I mean, not, not to generalize, but usually your male athlete's a larger usually athlete. But if you've got a taller, and we've had a couple taller females, they should do very well within the row event itself. Uh, well, I mean, then you don't necessarily have to put so much on the male. But even with that, if you have, I mean, especially when we get into the next heat where you have some really strong males, even even someone that's amazing like Samantha Briggs who has, who has had a world record. Now, this I'm shocked. The fact that we're actually making a switch to where she's going to hop on, that's transition time. It transitions in a thousand meter row. I just don't think you need to have two of them. That's, that was way too many. It's something you pointed out earlier, waited till the male, even though he's the one that helped tighten the foot straps. That's a, that's a second. You don't know how long that's going to be on the leaderboard. I mean, a thousand meters, a, a second, two seconds, three seconds, that's costly. I mean, all you need is a loose foot strap to keep yourself, if you're, if you're heaving instead of being smooth from falling off the back of the row, or you don't need a tight foot strap to hold you, you on. You don't need a tight, you just need to not fall off the back. <laughs> right. and just get your feet in there and get moving. So after this, they're going to get on to the 30 double kettlebell shoulder to overheads. You see a lot of teams having their first athlete get set to go. Down to the end and lane number nine. It's short and compact. The first to get the shoulder to overhead and a lane three right behind him. Train blue, tall and small. So it's nine and three. Short and compact followed by train blue, tall and small. So obviously it has to do with your body size if you're going to do very well in this particular <laughs> event in this heat. Wild thoughts of lane 10. They're now on the shoulder to overhead. Here comes lane three. That was just a re-pick up by Train Blue Tall and Small. They just switched to athletes. Short and compact. Hasn't even broke on those shoulder to overhead. She looks very, very smooth, very strong. Looks like she's, well, okay. There was a switch. I didn't think there would be a switch. She seemed very solid. Short and compact, that's Dmitry Jamdanovic and Sarah Churcher. They are out of Switzerland, CrossFit St. Gilan. Down there, the shirtless male doing the shoulder to overhead. That's short and compact. Now in lane 10, you're going to have wild thoughts out of CrossFit MMA in Italy. Down far on your screen on the deadlifts, you're short and compact in lane number 9. But here we go on the deadlifts. The male in front of you from wild thoughts. Wild Thoughts, they jumped the gun just a little bit. They had to wait till the, the female athlete finished. It kind of threw us off a little bit, but they are up here to the front, so they were able to get through those shoulder to overhead quick and right to the right of them. You can see the red weight just kind of sliding up and down. That's that short and compact, and they've been moving fast. Short and compact, first, Wild Thoughts, second, lane three, train blue, tall and small, third. They're all on their deadlifts. We talked about size and some of the events, uh, part of this, the row, if you had taller athletes, it's great. Now a smaller athlete, shorter range of motion. Shorter range of motion, don't have to move that bar as far in a, in a much better advantageous position just with heavy weight. You know, I mean, it, it, you're not having to use your back as much, and we've seen a lot of the taller athletes are bent over way more than the shorter, more compact athletes. And here's where things are going to start to get interesting, Bill. 
doesn't matter if you're the first to get off of these deadlifts and get to the ropes first. It's somewhat similar to the jump rope event we saw yesterday. If triple unders were your jam, you could go. If rope climbs are your jam and we have wild thoughts and short and compact in lanes 9 and 10, the top two teams, if you are great at rope climbs, you can make up five, six, seven oh, spots man, here in this last 10 reps. We've seen, it, we've seen it all day long between all in every single heat. We've seen that. Someone that's in the lead ends up not being in the lead because they don't have the rope climbs that someone else does. Yolo out of Sweden in lane four. They are the third team to get to the ropes. And now in lane three, Train Blue, tall and small, getting to the ropes. But this is short and compact. They're battling with wild thoughts right now for the top spot in the seat. And wild thoughts, really a lot on the line, trying to get into the final heat later today. We do not know what the event will be, how it will be scored, how many points will be on the line. There is a mystery event that they will announce down in the warm-up area once they have wrapped up heat four here. But from what we've seen so far, it's going to be outstanding. There have been some great <laughs> events this weekend or the Swiss Alpine Battle. The program has been uh, – what I like about it is it's not crushing um, for a lot of these athletes. It's demanding, but it's not going to crush them and just smash them where they, where they can't do anything for a week. Lane 10, Wild Thoughts out of Italy. Again, Antia Longo and Manfredi Otavi. They were fourth and fourth earlier today in the flip it, one and two. There is lane number nine, short and compact. Now, usually you would say the taller athlete has the advantage with the rope climbs, but if you're shorter and lighter, I don't want to say shorter. If you're lighter, it's a lot less work you have to do. Usually... If you're a shorter athlete, a lighter athlete, the things like pull-ups and gymnastic-type movements are a lot easier. So it looks like short and compact is using that to their advantage, and they're just going one-to-one -one back and forth. They are 20th overall. They were 30th and 33rd in flip at A and B today. Just over four minutes remaining. Short and compact now three reps away from winning this heat. Lane four, Jolo, they are currently in second place right there in the pink top. Actually, the pink top's bare and skull, but down low, two reps there for Jolo. As they are headed up the rep, the male and the blue, and here we go. Should be the final rep, and it will be for short and compact. Several teams with just two or three reps remaining, but it should be short and compact. There they go. Both athletes have to be across the finish mat and onto the mat, and they are wow. on at about 12.32. That was a great time. And what I like about watching the athletes run back to the mat, Bill, that's just a little hint of, of an O course to, oh. <laughs> to go back through all of the all the implements you had to do to get there. It is its own. It's the Swiss O course is what it is. Or, yeah. Lane 4, Jolo is across out of Sweden. So they are second in the heat. Wild Thoughts and Sarah and Casa came in and tied for 10th. They may be seeing that go away, though, their opportunity to potentially get into the final heat today. Lane 8 carried by Julie out of Denmark. Last rope climb coming up for Lane 1 as well. Lane 6, there goes Sarah and Casa. Lane 1, it's FML, and it's going to be... Lane one, FML got in just ahead of Sarah and Casa. And Jeff, we talked about what the rope climb does to this particular event. These guys right here were first to the ropes. We already have five, six teams already done. So they literally went from first to fifth in this heat just based on the rope climbs alone. They're actually going to finish, I believe, eighth in the heat. I only see two teams remaining on the rope climb. So they went from first to eighth within a span of 10 rope uh, climbs. And, and it, uh, it really comes down to what sort of ability do you have with the rope climbs. And again, we talked about how this is a more difficult rope climb. It's much higher, so it demands more of a legless rope climb. They may well have just said the whole thing was a legless rope climb. And with carried by Julie already getting in, Bill, carried by Julie may actually find themselves in the top 10 where Wild Thoughts and Sarah and Casa are going to be out of the top ten. So carried by Julie. We'll have to wait. There's still one more heat. Yep. Could be battling with the top ten teams today. Lane two and the black T-shirt, CrossFit Galileo out of France. As lane... 
Lee lane six down there for seven team all sack. We do have lane three still going as well. Train blue tall and small. Two, three. So that's lane six going in Saren Casa. So that's probably going to mean they're out of the final heat today. Lane three, train blue tall and small. On the way to the finish, Matt. So just the one team remains here in lane number two, CrossFit Galileo. And they've got less than a minute, but this is their last rope climb. And on the way. Oh. And they're in. So all the teams have completed here. So all ten teams in Heat 3 are through, but Wild Thoughts and Saren Casa, not sure if they, they were able to, to do enough, especially Wild Thoughts, who finished eighth in that heat, to make it the top ten. Still one more heat left, but it doesn't look good. Well, and it's tough to see because, again, this was two events, not one event. That's it's right. It's all wrapped up into one thing. So, you know, you, you, may, you, you may finish really, really well, which I think means you're going to have a decent score in your row. However... It's really hard to tell. We have no way of judging that um, as, they're, as they're going through the race. All we know is who finishes the end. So hopefully for them that they had a great row and then they kind of went, you know, the numbers will play out. That, that's what's really going to come down to. It's a numbers game. It makes it very difficult for us because we can't do that on our own in our head trying to calculate everything all at the same time. So you got to go to the leaderboard for that. We do have the athletes entering the floor now for heat number four. We've got a couple of really good races, two separate races, one for the top of the podium, and one for that final podium spot. Yeah, 25 points separates one and two, and then three and four. There's about 40 points in between second and third, so those that isn't really going to be the race, at least not to the final part. We, and again, we have to see how many points are going to be for that. But these four teams, they, the hard part is, is they, they haven't really shuffled out that much. So you really aren't going to get someone dropping to a 23rd or a 24th. I, I just don't see that happening. So... Uh, for all these teams, it's an important event, especially as they go into that final. And really, not a lot of teams have played spoiler. Now, Wild Thoughts did it earlier today in the flip at A and B. They, they played a little bit and got in between that third and fourth spot, closed the gap a little bit. But it, it's going to come down to this race between those four, four teams remaining. And as you look at the lane assignments, what we talk about in first and second will be Muscle Mountain in lane six and Barbellner in lane number five. And the battle for third and fourth team Svengalska is in lane seven. Fourth place, that's Fanny Pack, Jen Smith, and uh, Lucas Esslinger. They are on fourth place, just a little bit off a chance for that, uh, that third podium spot. You know, down in fourth place, Fanny Pack with Jen Smith and Lucas Esslinger. They had one mishap in the event, and they've been playing catch up ever since then. Um, but I swear, you look at the scores overall, I mean, for the, for the most part, basically seconds and thirds, you know, for the most part. Uh, but they're playing catch-up, and that's always a tough position to be in. And that really is a race. Team BP2 has done outstanding this weekend, Bill, but at 461 points, they're nearly 100 points out of the top four right now. They would need something huge, and they would need some kind of an event later today that, that had a lot of points involved. And, again, they're not going to make the announcement until after this final heat. They'll go down to the warm-up area. So as soon as we find out what the final event here for the Swiss Alpine battle is, the, of course, we'll relay that information to you. But right now it is a total unknown. About 30 seconds away here before we start the final heat of the classic chipper. And as they set up, Bill, uh, it is two different scores within this event. That's right. So we have the classic chipper, which is the rep scheme of 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Very something that we see in our regular box. Uh, a lot of different movements, and they can break that up any way they want between those overheads, the box jump overs, uh, the GHDs, the kettlebell, shouldered overhead, the deadlifts, and the rope climbs. Then right in squished in the middle, there's a thousand meter row. That is also a solo event. So thousand meters for time right in the middle of this other event. And really, it's not only two scoring, but it's really it's just it's two movements that are going to determine the points. That row, those ten rope climbs. Uh -huh, we've yeah, seen I agree. I agree. I think generally speaking, all the athletes here are very. Everyone that's in this top ten, very strong athletes. We've seen them all very consistent and all relatively sound and well rounded all the way through all the different events that, or uh, elements that they've been thrown. Uh, now it really comes down to okay, let's make sure that each team is playing to their strengths. 
So generally speaking, put your stronger athlete on the overhead squat for the overhead squat. Let your best jumper do the box jumps. Um, ideally, put your shortest athlete or the shortest torso on the GHC or the one that has the longest arms because they can just reach back and touch. <laughs> and then put your best rower on the row so you can get a, a big score there. 16-minute time cap. We are just underway in the 60 overhead squats of the classic chipper. Final, final heat here for this event, and then we'll find out what we're going to do later this afternoon. There is Jen Smith on the overhead squats. She, and you see the judge is really watching her hips. She's looking to make sure that, the, that Jen is opening up all the way. Here's the thing. You play to your judge. Make sure that as long as the judge is letting you do whatever range of motion you're doing, you stay right there and don't change it. Uh, even if it's close, I mean, that's competition. You want to make sure you get the best score. It's not a matter of cheating the repetition or cheating the range of motion. You're just doing what's being allowed, and that's, a, that's, com that's competition. And while we have some time, as you just mentioned it here in a longer chipper, let's give credit to the volunteers, the judges, oh, yeah. and the staff here. This is an incredible event. And, and how about, hey, I'm going to volunteer to be a judge. All right, we're going to put you on a team <laughs> that's got two games athletes. Don't mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to go out in front and have this competition. All of a sudden, I'm, I'm judging in Sam Briggs or Pat Bellner. Here's Smith. And Jen Smith with the fanny pack. And right behind her, Pat Bellner and Barb Bellner and Phil Hesketh moving as well. Hesketh on that team. Fingalskos trying to hang on to third here on the final day. Lane number eight, Team BP2. And they've... Gabriella Migala was on the podium a couple of years ago in the teenage division, and they are out of Poland. So they, you know, there's another games athlete here in this heat. And Nearly a, done with the box jumps. And this is exactly what Team Fanny Pack needs. They need to have a good event here. And again, not just have a good event, but hopefully finish ahead of uh, uh, Phil Hesketh and Mia Ackerlin. They need to get some points. The only way they're going to do that is they have a little bit of help from Pat and Lindy and then also Samantha and Adrian. Well, Vellner started, so he's in between Svengelska and Fanny Pack right now. We see Sam Briggs down there. Look at the tempo of Sam Briggs. It's up there with the – she's got the crazy uh, pants and the white, the white sports <laughs> bra. Look at the speed. And right next to her – Barely off screen to her left will be Svengalska there on the GHDs as well. But it does look like Jen Smith here was able to get Muscle Mountain and Barbellner at least between them and Fanny Pack. Or between uh, Svengalska, excuse me. So Fanny Pack able to get Barbellner and Muscle Mountain between it. You know, that's a 10, 12 point swing there to try to make that you're able to make up a little bit. Uh, Lucas looks like he's moving very fast again. I know that they were unhappy about the finish that they had yesterday in the jump rope, but look at the speed. Wow. There goes Jen Smith off on the rower as Pat Bellner wraps up his GHDs. Well, you can tell Fanny Pack here, Jen Smith, Lucas Esslinger, they have got that tunnel vision focus. They, wanna, they don't want to wait to have to make a huge run in the final event today. They are trying to make up the ground here. And I think this was actually a good strategic move for Team Fanny Pack. Jen Smith was on the GHC first, had a nice big chunk, was able to get Lucas on next, which allowed her a little bit of rest. So she's, I mean, look at the tempo and the, the ripping ability that she's putting on that rower. Get herself moving as much as she can, probably at a, maybe a good 300, and then throw Lucas on there and really use those big driving legs of his. It didn't take, it wasn't far behind the team. Svengalska, though, got on the rower behind Fanny Pack. So Svengalska trying to keep that gap fairly close. They got Phil Heska that looked like on the rower first before Mia Ackerlin. And you see that Lucas didn't even adjust his, his uh, foot grips at all. You see his feet are a little bit sloppy. But again, that doesn't really matter. It, it's not really going to change anything. In fact, you can use that to kind of whip yourself back into that row. Now it's just a matter of grinding through that row. You're not really going to use the rest that you normally would. It's just this is a race. This is a race in itself here at the 1,000 meters. See Jen Smith in the background just walking around trying to get some recovery as Sesslinger finishing on that row. He is in the red. As you can tell, he is at 500 and a little over 500 meters, and so it's a little less than 500 remaining. 
So Jen Smith did a great job on the row. I'm going to guess she went about three, three or so on the meters. She has plenty of time to recover. And I imagine she's going to take a huge chunk of the 30 kettlebell shouldered overhead. I think so. I mean, that would be a smart move. I mean, she's allow letting herself really recover. And again, we all know what it's like to go, even an all-out 500, it, it, you, it's tough to recover back from that. So Jen needs to take a big chunk so that Lucas can recover and hopefully get back to those uh, and do a big amount of those deadlifts. And under fatigue, he was rowing about a 134 split time on a 500. That's that, that that's fast in general, much less after you put that much fatigue <laughs> under you. You've done a lot of other work before that, yeah. A little less than 10 minutes remaining in the cab. That's going to be no issue for this team. 16-minute time cap here in the classic chipper. And again, this row we're watching here is going to be scored separately. 134 pace. Vellner up there rowing a 134. You can see uh, as it counts down, 175 meters remaining for Fanny Pack and for Vellner and Barbellner, it's 200. So it's about a 60-meter difference here for Fanny Pack over Barbellner. And they want Barbellner in between them and Svengalska. Yep. Mia Ackerlin down there is wrapping things up. She'll be the second rower, so that's going to put Phil Hesketh on the shoulder to overhead. He's going to furiously try to have to make up some ground on Jen Smith as she'll start the shoulder to overheads here. Lindy Barber will start on the shoulder to overheads. Here we go, Jen Smith. Already five reps in of the 30. Judge telling him to bring those elbows in. Great move. She didn't break. She didn't ask. She's being very aware. That's a mature uh, attack by an, a, a mature games athlete. You don't stop to say, what? What did you tell me to do? Just make the switch and do it. 15 reps in. So she's got about a 12-rep lead over Barb Elder, Lundy Barber off to the left in the purple. And they are the second-place team overall. So Barb Elner, here's your second story now. Barb Elner trying to make up some ground. And they're about 25 points behind Adrian Munwater and Sam Briggs, Muscle Mountain. So the two teams that need to make up ground, the Fanny Pack and Barb Elner, doing what they need to do to really make it a tight, tight final event today. But again, we've said... Getting to the ropes is cool. Can you finish things off? We saw a team in the heat earlier. Wild Thoughts get to the ropes first, finish eighth in the heat. So we know how this can swing as Jen Smith and Fanny Pack maintain their lead onto the deadlifts. And that's a big chunk that Jen is ahead of the rest of the field. So that's awesome. The fact that they we only have 20 of the deadlifts, looks like she's already hit about 10 of them. So there's 10. She's halfway done. Again, very strong with the back. Very good mover, and if she can get that done, and then you have someone like Lucas, Lucas Esslinger that's just going to slam through this set of 10. Lucas in the red shirt, black bottoms, Lenny Barber behind him. And the purple top, pink shorts. They are the second place overall team. The fanny pack here between Esslinger and Smith in the red top, black shorts. They are fourth overall. But both of these teams trying to make up ground. There goes Jen Smith. So they are the first team onto the rope climbs. So if you watch the technique that she does, she goes for two pulls and then squeezes with her legs. Not her feet, but she'll squeeze with her legs first, try to take a couple pulls, and then go to her feet. That's a good move. We're starting to see that a lot in regional competition. So Fanny Pack's got two rope climbs in the books. Oh. And look out. Here comes Muscle Mountain making a move over there with a gray shirt. That was Adrian Munweiner to get up the rope. So they are a rep ahead of Barb Bellner. Now, you still have nine rope climbs to go between those two, but Sam Briggs, you can see her going up as Jen Smith now making her way up. I mean, Jen Smith is doing a great job of using that technique. The only downside to that is we only have 10 reps, and when you have someone like Samantha Briggs that is so proficient on the rope, it makes it very, very tough to, to play catch up to that. The, the year that she missed the games after winning the CrossFit games, everyone remembers that valiant effort she made on the rope climb event where she absolutely, that was the rope climb yep. and sprint event where she left everyone in her dust. I know. So, like, if you have a rope event, <laughs> you have Samantha Briggs in there, it's going to be tough for the rest of the field. So we see Fanny Pack, Barbelder, Muscle Mountain, Svengalska on the ropes as well. We'll see who gets separated. There is Barbell, uh, lane four is Fanny Pack. They've got four remaining. Now they'll get down to three, and so does Barb Bellner. As Patrick Bellner and looking at Lindy Barber. Yesterday they were talking. They wanted Lindy Ooh. to get two or three and let, let him get most, but now two to go for Fanny Pack. As you see Sam Briggs make her way up. And again, both athletes are going to have to run back through the 
Chipper Course, and both athletes will have to be on that finish mat. Muscle Mountain Munweiler on their way so up. strong. Oh, Sam my Briggs goodness. And Adrian Munweiler on at 10.43 unofficially. What an incredible team those two are. Wow. And that is this the way it has played out all day in this event. Getting, getting to those ropes first really means nothing. It, it, it's cool. Here comes Bar. Here comes Fanny Pack, Jen Smith, Lucas Esslinger. So they were able to make up. Now, how many teams will get between Fanny Pack and Svengelsa before it's over? Here's Bar Belner, Lindy Barber. It's going to be their last rope climb. Oh. Svengelsky again. Those guys, quiet assassins. I'm telling you, they're ninjas. Ninjas from Dubai. So, so I'm telling you. The two teams that needed to make up ground had the early lead, but the two teams trying to hold them off end up finishing where they needed to finish. Here comes Barb Bellner, Patrick Bellner, and Lindy Barber. Now, that does not mean, Bill, all hopes lost. We, we have no idea how many points are going to be available right. today. <laughs> Lane number eight, Team BP2. That's Gabrielle Migala, one of the teenage podium finishers. So... Another CrossFit Games athlete here in this final heat. They are out of Poland, or teammate Pal Lezenkowski, out of CrossFit Genius and CrossFit 7-2-D in Poland. So once he gets across, their time will be stopped at about 12-18 unofficially. Lane number one, Team Extreme Firefighter out of Team uh, CrossFit Rishion in Italy. Manila Panaccio and Antonio Moloco. This is their final rep. Lane three has one rep, Team CLN as well. It's going to be a foot race. Foot race between Extreme Firefighter and CLN, and CLN's going to get both athletes on. And down in lane nine, it looked like Team Otter in there right about the same time as Extreme Firefighter. Lanes two and ten. This is LW Fitness out of Sweden. CrossFit Fallon, Victor Munt Larsen, and Louise Wickstrom, their teammates. That's that leg squeeze technique we're starting to see a lot of for the short rope. And LW Fitness is going to be in easily ahead out of the cap. So one team left in lane number two. That's moving habit, CrossFit Holistic. Marcus Erickson and Alan Roba, the two athletes for moving habit. Came in in eighth place overall today. That is their final rope climb. So they'll be in in a little bit under 14 minutes once Ellen gets on the finish mat at 13.55. Well, at the end of the day, it was a great race with the early lead going to Fanny Pack and Barbellner, but as we've seen so many times, it's Muscle Mountain teams, Svengelska, the first and third place teams making up the ground on the rope climb. It's going to be interesting to see what the final points are out of this one slash two scored event. Uh, just to see exactly what the road did and how that added to the points and what kind of shuffling or moving were these teams able to do. We saw who finished one, two, three, four in the overall part of right. the chipper, but you have that hidden row in the middle, and that's, that's added points we have to take into consideration. And then it, it, this is much like the games. We, we are unsure what the final event is, and we've seen into the games where does, it doesn't mean it's going to be a 100-point event. No. I mean, we've seen in the games where uh, two years ago when, when Mayhem won it, they had the, the six... 50 point events and right. there were 300 points out right. there if there's some kind of event today with two three four hundred who knows then it's still wide open 25 wide open. 30 points isn't a big deal now if it's a hundred point event later today 20 points is huge we just don't know right now and we'll have to find out we'll have to find out about that soon but it's been great we have one one more time on the floor we can say that we know that now how many events or not but we do know there's one more time on the floor for all of these teams uh, and just some quick general thoughts. What a weekend it's been. Uh, these teams coming in from all over the place to enjoy the Swiss Alpine experience. 
beautiful village. You've been here for about a week. You, you did a seminar yes. a week ago. I've been here since Thursday evening. This has just been an incredible experience, not only for athletes, but for staff from out of this country and, and the fan base. I was talking to some of the organizers. Uh, this is their third year, and again this year, they have increased the spectator ticket sales and the attendance here. Well, I, I think that a lot of out-of-the-season events are big for the name. This is just huge for the experience. I mean, if you have the chance to come out here and see something like this, you have to do it. One, the landscape is on point. It is, I mean, I've, I've taken so many pictures and none of them are allowing me to get the grandioseness <laughs> of, the, of the Swiss Alps and everything else around it. Um, the, the community has been great. Um, all the volunteers have been out of, just out of control and worked so hard. And I've seen nothing but smiles on everyone's faces. So it is a, very great run event. Um, the events have been amazing. It's been great to have some actual big names up here, uh, but they sell it as experience, and it is an amazing experience, 100%. Well, all right, Bill. Let, let, let's talk about what you think or what we may think we'll see out here later today in the final event or events, whatever it's going to be. We know the movements we've seen so far. doesn't mean you won't see those movement events again, but do you think you're going to see one 100-point event? Do you think it's going to be multiple events that come out with multiple points out of here? When I look over the past couple years of the types of events that they do, uh, there usually ends up being some sort of a triplet type thing at the end, a three-piece, a multiple piece at the end. So I'm not expecting a single one-point event. Um, also, the way they've had those hidden scored events in between. So I think there's still plenty of points to be had. I don't think it's going to be a one-shot deal. Um, I think that the way that it will be set up will be interesting so that it's going to put people through the ringer to where if you want to get those points, you're going to have to work really hard, and that's going to impact how you get these next set of points or whatever. Uh, I think it's going to be a piecework. And, and let's face it, CrossFit is, is, is somewhat uniform across the board or, or your functional fitness competitions, but each region, each uh, meridian, whether you're in North America, you're in Europe, you're in Asia or Australia, it's kind of a little feel for how they like to do things. So we may see something with kind of a, a Swiss vibe out here. I don't, I don't think they're going to be bringing any, like, sleds or toboggans <laughs> in here. Though. They might, <laughs> but I doubt it. Well, we're going to find out what it is here in a moment. They've gone down to the warm-up area to tell the athletes, and we'll let you know as soon as they come out for the final time here, and it will be the male males. But I'm going to wrap it up here for the Classic Chipper. For Bill Grunner, I'm Jeff Wright. We'll stay tuned. One more time on the competition floor from the Swiss Alpine Battle.